If you want to buy a hardcore electric off-road SUV, something that you know is going to last years and you know you can really get muddy and drive it hard, well, to be fair, there's not a lot of options. This electric car is not only affordable, not only is it big and can it fit a lot of stuff, it's also got impressive specs. And frankly, it's pretty much your only option if you want a hardcore off-road electric SUV that can take a lot of abuse and just keep on going. This new electric car made in Scotland is absolutely something you should consider if this is the kind of product you're after. Hello, my friends. Welcome to the channel. I'm the Electric Viking. And I've got to say, this vehicle actually kind of excites me because it's filling a segment niche that, you know, a lot of people just don't have access to. A lot of people want something like this and they say, well, here's a reason we shouldn't buy an electric car because there's nothing in this niche. Well, this kind of shuts them up. It says, you know what? Yes, there is actually. And it's probably a lot better than the gasoline powered Land Cruiser that you just bought. And it's cheaper. Yeah, seriously. It's cheaper than a Land Cruiser. Scottish startup Munro Vehicles, Munro not connected to Sandy Munro, totally different, is has unveiled its first model called the MK1, which it calls the world's most capable all-electric 4x4. In some ways, I think that's actually true. Realistically, one of my favorite parts of this vehicle is it actually is future-proofed in a way that no other car is, which is something that I don't think anyone's noticed about this vehicle but i'm going to tell you in a minute why this car is going to be awesome now and still awesome in 10 years time munro said that this is the world's most capable all-electric 4x4 we don't know if that's true yet but it seems pretty impressive based on the specifications the off-road ev will enter small scale production starting in a few months time in 2023 and it's going to have a 1000 kilo which is about a 2200 pound payload and more than 7,000 pounds, talking about 7,500 pounds, that's 3,500 tons. It also has a 16 hour off-road duty cycle on a single battery charge. It's thereby designed as a zero emissions option for users involved in construction, agriculture, mining, environmental, emergency rescue, remote infrastructure maintenance, and recreation without compromising on performance or capability, according to the manufacturer. Intensely focused on off-highway performance, reliability, ease of repair, and longevity, the Munro is engineered to provide owners and operators with decades of service, they said. I was initially a bit skeptical when I read all this. I thought, yeah, it sounds great. But I mean, realistically, a lot of people make these kinds of claims. Are they actually true? You look at the, ex the exterior of the vehicle and you think it does look hardcore. When you start to actually look at what this thing's made of and how it's been made, well, I've got to say, I think they're telling the truth. So what's the price? Well, in the UK, you can get one of these for around 49,900 pounds. That's around 60,000 US dollars or 90,000 Australian dollars. As you can see, it's extremely affordable for this size of vehicle. This is a big car. This is not some small, this is not some small box. It's really quite a big vehicle and it's been constructed in a way that I think means it will outlive pretty much every gasoline vehicle you can buy right now. Now the company says that they have orders from the UK, Switzerland, St. Lucia, Dubai, and even from the United States. So yeah, you can buy them pretty much anywhere in the world and they'll ship it to you. Munro says the first batch will be handmade next year at their factory in Scotland, but in 2024, Munro will move to a new purpose-built factory in central Scotland, where production is intended to scale to more than 2,500 units per year after a few years of production and ramping production up. Now, what, Munro has an interesting claim to fame. They say that this will be the they will be the first company to actually build cars at scale in Scotland since the Peugeot factory closed in 1981 that's more than 40 years ago now the specs are what makes this vehicle really quite a hardcore vehicle munro selected an actual flux for the electric motor it only has a single electric motor but that motor actually does drive all of the wheels and the motor will weigh half as much as the most common radial flux electric motors 
meaning it saves quite a bit of weight, especially only having one of them. It's located between the two front seat occupants in front of the vehicle's bulkhead. And the motor spins between 5,000 and 8,000 RPM, much slower revolutions than is common in other vehicles. This negates the need for a reduction drive, enabling drive to be taken directly to the transmission transfer case from the motor. By combining with a two-speed transmission, the motor can work at low speeds with greater efficiency, say Munro. Well, obviously, one of the gears is intended for slow speed crawling. When the Munro is in high drive gear mode, lifting off the accelerator provides a degree of regenerative braking. But in low gear off-road mode, the regen braking is much more pronounced, enabling one pedal driving. The Munro features a heavy duty mechanical braking system using non-vented discs as opposed to vented discs, which can become clogged with mud. So what about range and power? Well, there's two different options. You can get a motor with 295 horsepower, that's about 220 kilowatt. Or there's another option that comes with 375 horsepower, which is 280 kilowatt. And it comes with 700 newton meters of torque, or 516 pound feet of torque as standard. Now, Munro has chosen to use the single electric motor because of their intense focus on off roading. This vehicle, it's really made from the ground up for off roading. There's so many little details here that they've thought about. The power unit is placed in the middle of the vehicle to help achieve its near 50-50 perfect weight distribution. It also allows perfect torque distribution. Munro said this, I'm a bit skeptical on this, but this is what they had to say. The best way to drive off road is to ensure that the same amount of torque is delivered to each wheel and that all wheels spin at the exact same speed, said the CEO. No matter how clever your computer is, you're still going to have problems if you've got a split drive line in the vehicle. Incredibly, that single motor only weighs 40 kilos. I mean, for the average diesel motor, you would need to have 10 of these and it would still be lighter. 10 of these electric motors would be lighter than the average V8 powered diesel motor that you see in vehicles this size. Now it comes with two battery pack options. One is a 61 kilowatt hour option. That's gonna give you a pretty small range. The other one, which I'm guessing is what most people will go with, is a 82 kilowatt hour battery pack. That comes with around about 310 kilometers of range, so about 200 miles of range. Now, while it doesn't sound like it would be fast, having a single motor actually is pretty good. It'll do zero to 62 miles an hour, zero to 100 kilometers an hour, in 4.9 seconds. That's that's pretty fast. It's not waiting around. The battery pack, what's it made of? It's a nickel-based battery. It's NMC, so nickel, manganese, cobalt-based battery, and it doesn't have an electric skateboard. They did that intentionally. The reason is that they actually wanted to make it so you could replace those battery packs if needed, whether that's five years, 10 years down the, down the line. What this is, it's kind of future-proofed. If these batteries get worn out from say 20 years of use, you can very easily replace them. That's the way they've designed the car. The 35 lithium NMC modules are mounted in three heavy duty aluminum boxes underneath the vehicle. This arrangement, they say, ensures it is quick, convenient, and inexpensive to replace individual battery modules if required. With your average electric vehicle, the battery is designed to last the life of the car. So in most cases, customers will never have to worry about replacing it. But because the Munro is engineered to last several decades, we will either recondition or replace the battery pack for customers when the time eventually comes. The Munro is offered with either a seven kilowatt or 22 kilowatt AC charging, as well as a CCS type DC charging. So that's, that's the big Achilles heel, heel of this vehicle. First of all, the range is not that long. Charging speed is very slow. Other than those two things, which I think are significant detractions, it's actually impressive in every other way. And what are your thoughts? Do you agree? Do you disagree? Would you be able to live with that kind of charging speed? Would that be an issue for you or that range? For some people, of course, that would be a deal breaker. I think others, let's say if you have a farm, this would be the perfect vehicle for a farming environment, agriculture environment, mining environment. I can see this being I can see this actually selling incredibly well at this price. Munro claims at no point did it cons even consider using a skateboard chassis with two electric motors. Instead, the priority was to equip the Munro with a single central mounted electric motor providing power to a mechanical four wheel drive system. The best way to drive off road is with this setup, they say. 
Now the vehicle sits on a galvanized steel ladder chassis constructed with five millimeter thick steel. Munro builds its own axles and uses a combination of aftermarket and motorsport derived components for the rest of the mechanical driveline. And by motorsport, what they're saying is for off-road racing. This is seriously a hardcore SUV. There's no chance that a Land Cruiser would be better off-road than this. Sorry, my friends. There's a lot of people out there that think, oh, Land Cruisers, they're indestructible. Yeah, no. They're nothing compared to this beast. Off-road prowess is enhanced by a massive 480 millimeter ground clearance and the claimed ability to wade through water at a depth of nearly one meter. The radical design allows 84 and 51 degree approach and departure angles, plus a 148 degree break over angle. Now you can see that that actual wheelbase, the wheelbase is massive. It's almost the length of the vehicle. That's really, really good for off-road driving. The body is mounted to the chassis at eight different points. The company says while it initially outsourced production of the body, the aluminium panels, all aluminium to keep the weight down, are now laser cut, formed and folded on site before being moved a few meters to the company's paint shop. The MK1 is designed to handle more than 2,000 pounds of payload and a standard Euro pallet will sit in the load bay. There are also two front side lockers designed to carry charging cables, large tools and wet weather gear. The interior uses industrial level switch gear, says Monroe's CEO. The switches will be familiar to anyone using farming equipment. They can be operated with gloves on, they're fully waterproof, so with the hard wearing floor and the door surfaces, the whole vehicle can be power washed from waist height down. So you can get a pressure washer in there and just spray the thing out. It doesn't even matter if you hit the screen. That's amazing. The switches are almost impossible to break, but if they get damaged, they're quick, easy, and inexpensive to replace. This thing would be awesome as a pickup truck as well. The Munro is offered with a choice of low and high power DC converters for running ancillaries such as switches and light bars. In addition, two USB C sockets and two wireless charging pads. The MK1 is also equipped with two three pin household sockets. Now, one of my favorite things about this car is actually the steering wheel. I love the simplicity of it. It sort of looks semi racing, but, but not. It's kind of a nice touch. The dashboard features a deletable double DIN screen compatible with Android Auto and Apple CarPlay. It can also be upgraded with a superior unit or replaced with a UHF two-way radio. In terms of sales, Monroe says it will have a series of agents around the world which will sell the vehicle, but it won't establish a traditional dealer network. If you want to buy the vehicle, you basically buy it straight from the company. Each vehicle comes with a five-year, 160,000 kilometer warranty. That's about 100,000 miles. So clearly you can see this vehicle is incredibly capable. It's well built. It looks hardcore. It really does meet the niche. It meets the needs for some people who believe that they need an electric, that they need an off-road vehicle that is completely capable. I don't think there's a gasoline powered vehicle in production right now at this price which is as capable off-road as this is. If there is one, let me know what it is in the comment section below. And let me know your thoughts on this car as well. Personally, I'd love one. I'm putting my hand up. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.